And so I want to play you this clip of Ryan Clark, the ESPN broadcaster. And, and it, w this is what we've done to men with this type of thinking. And I'm not calling Ryan Clark a victim because other men have allowed this. He's allowed this, but, but he's not willing to stand on anything. He's very fungible. He's very fluid in his thinking. And that level of fluidity is why so many men, boys, they're fluid in everything. Their gender beliefs, their sexual beliefs, their sexual orientation. But let's play Ryan Clark, who one day says, hey, I'm going to respect Donald Trump and what the will of the people said, gets a little blowback on social media, and folds. Play the clip. I've had a couple of days to digest the election. And right afterwards, I put out a tweet saying that I respect President Trump as the president and his office. And there was a lot of pushback from my community on social. I voted for Kamala Harris, but it reminded me of how divisive this country had gotten, how divisive this election had gotten. When did the side that candidate won feel like they won the Super Bowl? When did they brag about it? When did they boast about it? When did they throw it in your face? Because it was just their guy, not our guy. Or on the other side, the sadness, the depression, people truly thinking about this not being a place that they could live. Even my oldest daughter who was visiting my parents told me at 7 a.m. she got up and she just laid in the bed with my mother and cried. Started when we wanted to make America great again, but wasn't it before? I felt like it was the greatest it had ever been. For eight years, President Obama represented us with class and with grace and with elegance and with decency. There were no scandals, there were no impeachments, there were no felony charges, there were no indictments, there were none of these things that are unbecoming of the office. And we elected someone that ran a campaign based in bigotry and based in hate. And for those four years, it wasn't great. In 16, I remember someone sitting in that office calling people that peacefully protested sons of bitches. And then 2020 in his last year, it wasn't about just COVID to me. It was the most divided this country had ever been. And then I would have people tell me, well, he pardoned Kodak. Yeah, he pardoned your favorite rappers. So he became your favorite rapper's favorite politician. Does that make us forget that four black boys and one brown boy who didn't commit a crime, he took an ad out for them to receive the death penalty. And even when they were exonerated, he doubled down on it. And what's changed in this campaign? It's still the same sort of bigotry. It's still the same sort of speech. I think now the difficult part is, I do understand that not everyone that supports him <laughs> believes in his rhetoric. Not everyone that supports him thinks bigotry is okay. They've told me that he believes in Christian values. And it said, God gave us grace for the salvation of all. For me, I'll give him that grace because I do want salvation for all people. It's gonna be forever hard to respect the man. And I don't, and I won't, but I will respect the office. I wanna be a sane man in an insane society. I wanna be a reasonable man in an unreasonable world. So I won't be divisive. But I do hope, for all of our sakes, he understands that he's our president. Let's be honest. The insurance model is broken. CrowdHealth puts your health care back in your hands. Use the promo code FEARLESS at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com, promo code FEARLESS. Uh, Steve Kim, Korean Cosell. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, what a time to be alive, Steve. Uh, were you moved by Ryan Clark's very emotional uh, speech, soliloquy that he uh, gave on the streets? Uh, I, I know 
Any members in your family in bed crying when Donald Trump got reelected? <laughs> <laughs> Gather yourself, Steve. Gather yourself. Jason, yeah. TJ, Butter, yeah. talk amongst yourselves. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. And it got me thinking, this is, an, this is really analogous to what has taken place where it turns out that Kamala Harris paid off a bunch of those people, those celebrities who really cared about saving us from Hitler with a lot of money, that these endorsements were paid for, right? Well, how valid can any statement be when it comes attached to future employment or payment? It's not very authentic. So with Ryan Clark and others, I've noticed this, there's almost like this performative wokeness that takes place on social media. And instead of money, it is really popularity, which is the capital or approval. See, Ryan Clark made the mistake of thinking, you know what, now that it's over, uh, my side lost, but I'm going to be gracious to his credit. Let me have an olive branch, at least calm this down a little bit and give my honest thoughts. Because the way Ryan Clark lives his life and the money he's making, I don't believe any president, a single ind a singular individual can make a negative or positive impact on his life. But here's the problem. He has cultivated an audience, which again, as Thomas Sowell would say, lives with the philosophy of grievance. And then he had to step all the way back and do a 180, which then here's the issue. I can never believe anything Ryan Clark says now. Because I don't know which guy to believe. I totally, totally agree with you. I, I he's very predictable though, and so I believe <clears throat> virtually none of it. It's it's all just cosplay. Uh, he he's not alone in this. I think he's just the guy in the sports lane that's kind of dived into it more head first than anyone else. Steve, I want to play you a clip from. Ben Strauss and John Oran, because Ryan Clark is somewhat out of step with what the rest of ESPN is doing. ESPN is trying to back away from the divisive political stuff and just not talk about it, where Ryan Clark's brand with the pivot and his social media brand keeps him tied to it. But here's Ben Strauss of the Washington Post and John Oran of Sports Business Journal uh, talking about how ESPN's trying to, with the topics it's allowed to talk about, trying to go a different direction. Play the clip. Uh, is it just an observation or is there a, 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 something larger that we should derive from this? That is a good question. Um, I do think if you look at the people that Jimmy Pitaro has hired and the people that he has not re-signed, there is, you know, a move toward the Stephen A's and the McAfee's and a move away from the Levitards and the Bomani Joneses and, um, you know, the Pablo Torres. And so I don't know if there was like, we want you to talk about politics or not in a specific way, but I, I think you can sort of see like who they have hired and promoted and um, given bigger platforms to versus who they haven't. So um, I don't know if it's, that's the, the calling card of, of, the network exactly but certainly through personnel choices you end up with something that looks like it does today and is the people that espn covers are talking less about politics and so when you don't have colin kaepernick in the news you talk about that issue less on espn and i think you know the 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 flip side of that sort of coverage question what happens at these networks is is you've seen leagues pull back from some of this stuff i think you know the nba we're, we're four years ago the nba was in the bubble with social justice names on the back of their jerseys and we are so far away from that you know for any number of reasons but the people that espn is covering are are talking about this stuff less and so by default espn is talking about it less so i see ESPN, it's like when LeBron James attacked Donald Trump and endorsed Kamala Harris. ESPN never touched the, the news story, never appeared on ESPN.com. They didn't talk about it on air. 
Ryan Clark seems to be going a completely different direction than ESPN. ESPN is trying to put on the pretense of being more neutral, while Ryan Clark seems to be doubling down on politics. How do you see it? Well, there is a correlation between guys like Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, uh, and Ryan Clark. They have their own platforms that are separate from ESPN, which gives them, I believe, a little bit more leverage and power. And to me, I, I like that. Hey, guys, isn't capitalism great, by the way? Congratulations on that. So, the and the other thing is, I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you, Jason. I don't actually mind Ryan Clark saying what he says. I believe in the freedom of speech. We do not have to agree. The issue is, here's the thing, especially post-November 5, if you want to make that the demarcation point in America, we no longer have to pretend, and I'm talking about the general public at large, to pretend to agree with Ryan Clark or to quote, unquote, be an ally or a sympathizer. Can we be honest about what being an ally is? That means agreeing with somebody that you don't agree with because you don't want to anger them and be labeled a racist or a misogynist. That is the truth. So again, Ryan Clark and everybody else can say what they want. I don't believe in canceling anybody. I don't believe in anyone being deplatformed. In fact, I want their message amplified because we now, I believe, America have the free reign to say, no, 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 you're completely wrong and we'll tell you why and we can agree to disagree honestly. I 100% agree with Steve, so long as both sides get to do that. And so <clears throat> what we had had, we had lived under this umbrella of no politics on ESPN uh, and you know, on your personal self, what you say by yourself, that actually reflects on us, so you can't give your personal opinion in your personal life either, okay? And so, but then we started to move under this woke umbrella of like, well, we'll cover our politics that we like here at ESPN, and, and privately, you can say it so long as it reinforces the ESPN agenda. So Kirk Herbstreit doesn't get to say anything that he really thinks. He has to just pretend to go along with it, and once in a while, we need you to cry on TV, okay, Kirk? Now- and Orlovsky, yes. walk back his comments. Yes. Or Exactly right. And so now, Kirk Herbstreet is saying, hey, I don't give a crap about this. Men shouldn't be playing in women's sports. And so long as ESPN goes with this, and I think ESPN's been neutered, everybody's got their own podcast today, ESPN doesn't get to dictate the rules anymore because you can go make just as much money somewhere else, Pat McAfee or whoever else. And so with this new set of rules, I 100% agree with Steve. Say whatever you want. Don't say it on ESPN because a lot of people go on ESPN just to hear sports. But if you want to have your podcast, and talk all about how men should or should not play in women's sport, great. At least I, I can sort through what the truth is. I would yeah. like to take a comedy approach. Hang on, hang on real quick, Steve, because yeah. I've been waiting all morning to do this little skit for you guys right here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this uh -oh. is... <laughs> hold for a second. Uh, <laughs> get, the box, get, get the butter box ready. Get the butter box ready. I'm going to be... Prepare the butter box! I'm going to be cutting down the nets after this one. You're going to hang banners for me in, in oh. the auditorium. This is, Ryan Clark is the fainting queen, and I am, gonna, I am gonna reenact Ryan Clark, the fainting queen, fainting on cue over one of his last comments that he made. And if you like it, I can do two of them. This is, this is Ryan Clark. And, and Nick Bosa knew exactly what he was doing when, when he wore that MAGA hat. <gasps> mm. Mm. For eight years, President Obama represented us with class and grace and elegance and decency. <gasps> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's okay. <laughs> but that was all right. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, Butter. Uh -huh. uh, not bad. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a moment of fearless.